All right, um, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to USDA Rural Development's live event for Single Family Housing Guaranteed Loan Program, um, Single Closed Construction Loan Program. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. My name is Alyssa Rung, and I'm with the Lender and Partner Activities Branch of the Single Family Housing Guaranteed Loan Division. I, along with a few members of our team today, will be moderating today's event. We are excited to share with you some guidance and helpful tips on the Single Closed Construction Loan Program. But before we get started, I just wanted to take a minute to go over some brief housekeeping items in addition to those we've already posted under the announcements. First, because of the number of attendees we have today, all lines have been muted. If you have a question about any topics presented during today's live event, let us know by clicking the Ask a Question button that's located in the bottom right of your screen. We will do our best to address as many questions as we can today. Given the number of attendees we have, if you have a loan scenario or more complex question, please contact our staff by email or phone. The contact information is listed here and also posted under announcements. Closed captioning is available for today's live event. Just hover, hover your cursor over the toolbar at the bottom and you will see the closed captioning icon at the bottom right. This live event is being recorded for immediate playback, so don't worry if you run into any technical issues. You can log off and rejoin us from the beginning of the event or at the point where you left off. To access the recording, just re-enter the live event using the same link you originally joined with today. Playback may begin automatically, or you may need to click the play button to restart the event. Lastly, we have added a link to a survey in the chat. This survey will ask just a few questions. The answers that you provide will help us to ensure we are providing content that is relevant to you, and we are creating presentations that make the best use of your time. If you could take just a minute to complete it, we would greatly appreciate it. Now, to get us started with today's presentation, please welcome Ed Peace. Thank you, Alyssa. I appreciate that. Let me get my screen up here and going. Seeing live. You should be able to see my screen now. Can you see it, Alyssa? Yeah, we see it. Yep, I can see it. Okay, great. Well, Take it away. Hello. Thank you. Good afternoon and good morning to everybody, uh, wherever you may be in the country. Um, my name is Ed Peace. I am also on the Lender and Partner Activities Branch. I'm a finance and loan analyst with USDA. And today we're going to talk about the construction to permanent loans, also called the, uh, we officially refer to them as the single closed construction loans. And so as the name implies, the construction of permanent loan feature combines the short-term interim financing with the long-term permanent residential mortgage all in one loan closing. So this saves the applicant uh, and the lender time and money by rolling, that, uh, rolling those two loan closings into one loan closing. So I hope you're getting excited about that already. Uh, as, as you all know, there is a lack of affordable housing stock in rural America. So we hope um, by you becoming familiar with the single close construction that you will be able to do more construction loans and help alleviate that uh, lack of housing stock. USDA's loan of guarantee is issued immediately after loan closing and before the house is even built. And we'll talk about that more as we go along. The single close construction loans save applicants money over uh, the older two-time closed loans because there's only one closing and one set of closing costs. Hey, let's first look at the summary of the construction of perm loan feature. Then we'll look at it more in detail as we go along. In addition to funding regular new construction projects, we offer a single closed construction program to help supply affordable housing in rural America. As the name suggests, it's a single close loan closing, meaning only one set of closing documents is needed. This keeps the applicant from spending uh, time and money uh, that is unnecessary. Um, the single close process was designed to protect all participants involved in the transaction. Perhaps most importantly, USDA's, USDA's loan up guarantee is issued at loan closing before a shovel even goes into the ground. And get this, if there's a realtor involved for the builder, uh, the realtors get paid at the loan closing. And the builder is protected as, as the build is also funded at the closing. This means the funds are there if something catastrophic, heaven forbid, happens with, to the homeowner or to the borrower. More on that later. 
But assuming everything goes as planned, the borrower will find a more comfortable experience as they will have a fixed rate locked for their loan and can escrow, get this, up to 12 months of payments into the loan to avoid having to pay rent plus their new house payment during construction. Additionally, the loan can include the cost of acquiring land or paying off any balance on land that they already own. There's also two versions available, the standard interest only and the securitized version. And we'll, we'll talk about more about each one of those a little bit later. So let's look closer at these. Uh, so I'd like to emphasize that USDA's loan of guarantee is issued immediately after loan closing before the house is built. So this means that all parties involved are protected from loss right from the start. So the issuance of the loan of guarantee. So the full amount of the loan is guaranteed. There's a footnote there that says the maximum payout is a 90% guarantee, which means the maximum payout is 90% of the original principal amount. These are 30 year and they are fixed rates. Okay. You would, you would fix, uh, offer fixed rate loans on these. After the closing, the funds are dispersed to cover the cost of the land and any, any applicable closing costs. And there's a note there that says construction should be completed within 12 months, obtain all permits prior to beginning of construction. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. That may lead you to a question, well, what if it goes over 12 months? We'll talk about that in just a second. So we mentioned there were two options to be able to finance the um, either interest or the full PITI payments in with the loan. So the first one is called the interest only. Those payments are made during construction period. Those can be made either from the borrower's pocket, out of the borrower's pocket, or you can actually roll in up to the appraised value, uh, any interest uh, that the appraised value may um, allow you to roll in to that loan. So we're always maximized, we're always limited by that appraised value on any of USDA loans, okay? The second option is the securitized version. Those are where the full PITI payments are made during construction. And uh, so there are reserve accounts that may be established from loan funds to cover the payments due during construction for either option above. And those, we are limited to 12 months of uh, either interest payments or the PITI payments to be rolled into the loan, okay? Okay, let's look at the benefits to the lender. So the lenders are protected during construction by USDA's guarantee. And I've got a footnote there, so let's look at my notes. Um, they say that should there be circumstances arising that cause the contract to be broken, in other words, the death of the borrower or the contractor uh, or something along those lines, the lender will ensure that the construction of the dwelling is completed. And if needed, the house would be marketed sold and the proceeds applied toward the loan balance. And if needed, a loss claim would be filed with USDA. So the lender would be responsible for making sure, for seeing that the house construction is complete and sold and um, the proceeds applied to the loan uh, balance. And then if there's anything left over, you would file a claim. The securitized version, again, that's where the PITI payments are made from reserves. Uh, there's no reamortization required because the borrower would just take over those payments at the end of construction. The PITI, the securitized version, may be sold immediately on the secondary market because that is a securitized asset for the lender because it has an income stream from those payments. So you could actually sell that before the house uh, is even finished or even started. Banks, you receive the CRA credits that you're, you know, looking to fulfill. Uh, you can expand your client base by offering this no down payment loan product. So USDA's construction loans, we follow the same eligibility, the same um, no down payment requirements as our regular USDA loans do. Benefits to the builders. Builders do not have to put up their own capital or use their line of credit for the construction project. Uh, and this would expand their client base by reaching more homeowners with a no down payment program. So basically the builders shift that burden of interest payments over to the borrower and uh, don't have to um, don't have to burden, shoulder that burden themselves. 
If again, if there is a builder involved with the realtor going out and finding clients for new construction, the build the realtor gets paid uh, at the initial loan closing before the house is built, which is a rare event for realtors. So. Uh, again, just as with the others, realtors can expand their client base by reaching more home buyers with a no down, no down payment loan program. And finally, the benefits to the buyers. There's only one set of loan closing costs because that saves them money. Uh, the interest or the PITI reserves alleviate the need to make payments on the new loan while they're making rent uh, payments during the construction period. There is a contingency reserve and it protects against the cost overrun uh, payments out of pocket. Uh, for the interest only, you would do a reamortization at the end of construction and any leftover reserve uh, funds would be applied to reduce the principal balance. Uh, owners of new construction have less maintenance concerns, so you're get, giving them a, a, a better chance to be a successful homeowner by not having a lot of maintenance right off the bat. Sometimes folks get into an existing house and have to replace the roof, you know, two or three years down the road. And so uh, this alleviates that concern for the, for the home, home buyer. Okay, as I mentioned before, our appraised value, the appraised value of the property is always the upper limit of what we can loan, what you can loan on a USDA loan. So if, if you're rolling in any reserve uh, funds into the loan, please be sure to make you know, make sure that you give the appraiser all the costs involved, including the land um, contract, any costs associated with construction, what you plan to roll in for the reserve accounts. All of that has to be equal to or less than the appraised value. And uh, so the appraiser must be given all the costs associated with construction be included in the final market value. Okay. Let's look at lender responsibilities. So, you as the lender would oversee disbursement of loan proceeds. You would monitor the construction of the subject property. You would obtain documentation confirming that construction is complete once it's complete and then ensure the use of a fixed price contract. Fixed price just means that it's not a floating or cost plus type contract. Establishing contingency reserves are okay. Obviously, we've already talked about that. And so once the lenders, once a lender has USDA approval by submitting the request for the conditional commitment, you are self-certifying your staff has two or more years experience making and administering construction loans. So there is no extra step to get approved to do construction loans once you are a USDA approved lender. You just submit that um, a loan request and by submitting that, you're certifying that your, your um, staff has two or more years experience in administering construction loans. In lieu of the above, a lender may employ a construction loan management company with two or more years experience. And the lender confirms the eligibility of the company employed. So if you don't have quite the two years experience uh, with construction loans, you may employ a third party that will oversee that project. And um, you also confirm the eligibility of the builder. Let's take a look at that. So builder and contractor requirements. The lender verifies and documents in your file that the builder has, the builder themselves has to have two or more years experience in building construction of single family housing. Okay. We're, we're not able to get a new builder off the ground that somebody who doesn't have that two years experience. They have to have a state issued construction or, constru or contractor license if, if their state uh, law requires that. They have to have commercial general liability insurance of $500,000 or more. And the contractor uh, contractors building their own residence are ineligible for this program. OK. And as you already know, a key to the success for the single close construction loan feature is that is the financial stability and reputation of the builder constructing the home. So they are an integral part of this process. So make sure, uh, you know, that the borrower has good uh, reputable builders out there. We don't vet the, build, the builders anymore or, or tell you how to vet them. We used to, but we have removed those uh, requirements from our regulation. So we leave that up to you to do that. Eligible loan costs. Let's take a look at them. So. You can roll in the cost of the loan 
uh, of the land, that's the acquisition or payoff of balance. Um, any construction hard costs, such as costs in, included in the contract and detailed in the budget, costs outside of the contract and paid to others. So in other words, if the well and septic tank are not under the same contract that the builder, the building is, uh, obviously we can roll in those. Anything associated typically with that, that build project. Roads and driveways, landscaping are, are all eligible costs to be rolled into the loan. Construct, construction soft cost, inspection and survey fees, and contingency reserves, permits and lender administrative fees, all those are eligible costs to be rolled into that loan. Okay, a contingency reserve is not required, but it may be utilized to cover eligible expenses associated with unplanned problems with construction or change orders. And the maximum of that is limited to 10% of the construction cost. That construction would be including the labor, materials, and soft costs. And the funds must be deposited into a construction reserve account. Again, it's not required, but it's there to be used if, if necessary, or if you think it would be necessary. So when it comes time to close the loan, um, standard industry closing documents are used. The lender ensures that the promissory notes is signed and a valid first lien is obtained at closing. The term of the loan at closing is 30 years. Okay. The interest rate during construction must be a fixed rate. Uh, a true adjustable rate during construction is not allowed. We'll talk, we'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. The annual guarantee fee that USDA uh, requires, that begins to accrue at loan closing and will be due each year at the anniversary date. So USDA requires it to be paid annually to us. You typically um, you know, have the borrower pay that on a monthly basis. So that's 3,500 basis points of the, of the loan amount. Okay, let's look at the interest only payment uh, option. So if, you're, if, you, if you and the, the borrower have chosen the interest only payments during construction. Those can be established from in a reserve account or they can be paid directly by the borrower. And obviously you would document, verify and document that the borrower has the ability to make those payments, you know, out of pocket. And again, you can establish a reserve account for, for those from loan funds, which is pretty cool. Securitized version versus the interest only. So both versions offer a contingency reserve up to 10% of the construction cost and any payment reserve of up to 12 months. So these are limited to 12 months. The reserves are for the, for the payments. At loan closing, the agency loan of guarantee is issued and put into effect, protecting the lender during the building process. Here's where the difference comes into play. With the standard interest only version, the interest only payments being uh, being during construction and at the completion of construction after any excess reserves are applied to the principal balance, the loan would be modified and reamortized uh, within the remaining balance of the term. So you might have to reamortize that for less uh, months than the 396 than the, th than the 30 year term. With the securitized version, Excess contingency funds are also applied to the principal balance. But there's no need for modification or reamortization since the regular payments have already been being made from the start. So what this version accomplishes is the, the ability to securitize the loan immediately by the fact those regular payments are being made already, eliminating the need for lenders to maintain a warehouse line of credit during the construction period. Plus the builder does not have to front their own capital as we mentioned before or their line of credit this loan feature uh, and its process were designed to mitigate risk while providing affordable new construction. Okay, so if you're using the warehouse line of credit, you can do dual disclosures. Um, that's the terms of, of the interim and the terms of the permanent separated, or you can do single disclosure that blends the, uh, the terms of the two. Okay. When construction is complete, this is for the interest only now, when construction is complete, reamortization may be utilized to achieve full repayment for the remaining term of the loan. So that may bring up a question in your mind. If the loan modification causes a higher PITI payment than those used to underwrite the loan, 
USDA does not require you to re-underwrite and resubmit. Okay, so uh, at that point, is it is what it is. So the interest rate for the permanent loan may be lowered with the loan modification. So that's another way of saying that you can ch um, charge a higher rate during construction, but it has to be a fixed rate for, for during the construction period, as well as that fixed rate for the um, modification and, and long-term portion. Both rates are fixed. The, uh, the interest rate for the permanent loan may be lowered. It cannot be raised, however. We have had that question in the past. It can be lowered only with that loan modification. The lender is to provide the executed modification agreement to USDA with the loan closing package. Uh, the amortization must begin no later than the first of the month, 60 days from the final inspection. Okay, 60 days from final inspection, the amortization must begin. Okay, so we mentioned we've talked about securitized version. So after loan closing, those PITI payments are made during construction. You may lend up to 12 months payments during the construction period. The appraised value must support this. Lender manages those payments, those draws. There's no need for loan modification or reamortization, again, because the payments have already been being made. The borrower resumes payments at the end of the construction period. And any excess funds being held in reserve will be applied as the principal curtailment. Okay, so those construction draws, um, the lender requirements, so the draws and disbursements are managed and recorded by the lender, that's, that's during construction, or the lender's construction management company, as we mentioned before. The borrower and the lender are jointly responsible for making those draws, and the lender would retain documentation to confirm that the work has been completed for the draws dispersed. And it says when funds are dispersed, the lender is warranting that to rural development that the work was done as specified. So y'all, one of the last things in the world you want to do is to um, make a draw on work that has not been done. That has happened in the past uh, before and it's not a good, good fun place to be for anybody involved, especially when things go south and, and uh, things don't work out. So change orders and unplanned changes. Uh, change orders must be approved by the lender. The borrower is responsible for any costs related to a change order that will exceed available loan funds. So in other words, they would have to pay out of pocket uh, for any change order. Uh, proposed changes should not affect the scope of the project or the appraised value. In other words, if the change order, we, we've had them in the past where they were changing the uh, siding, the type of siding used on the house from vinyl, from brick to vinyl and changed the roof um, typed from a hip roof to a, to a gable roof. Um, and maybe even the pitch of the roof, making it a lower pitch. Things like that change the scope of the project and could very well change that appraised value. So got to be really mindful about that. And the unplanned changes during construction, it says life, uh, Sorry, should a life change occur with, with the borrower, such as loss of a job or a death, then the lender remains responsible to work with the builder to complete the home. I think we already mentioned that. Okay, the construction closeout. So uh, once construction is complete, the lender obtains and retains in your file the appraiser's final inspection, the certificate of occupancy, the final title policy clear of all liens, construction phase inspections, the construction contract, the cost breakdown, the construction ledger where the draws were made, the builder's warranty, we'll talk about that in just a second, and the complete lender loan, you have to go into the lender loan closing system, USDA's lender loan closing system and complete that. Okay, so that's at construction closeout. And my note here says attachment 12D is in David of the handbook may be used to make these certifications. Um, the lender loan closing system will be mentioned in later screens, but for now let's look at the builder warranty requirements. Okay, so the builder warranty. Uh, on, on, in the handbook, if you're making notes, uh, see page 12-21, and there you will find the information about uh, plans and plans and specs being certified and who may certify those. They have to be certified to meet the 
International Code Council. Uh, that's the energy standard. Uh, and should include the uh, thermal standards for the IECC, that's the International Energy Conservation Code, or the current uh, state adopted energy codes or construction codes for the residential construction. So inspections can be done either by a, you obtaining a certificate of occupancy by a local jurisdiction that performs at least three phase inspections and, and a one year builder's warranty or the second option is if there's no building department in that city or county, then the footing, the rough in and final inspections have to be documented with the one year builder's warranty. Okay. And if you don't get any of those, then you can get by with a final inspection only if the builder has enrolled that house into a 10 year warranty program. So it's kind of a trade off. Either the house has been inspected with a one year builder's warranty, or if no acceptable inspections, then you have a 10 year, uh, 10 year warranty on that, on that house, on that structure. Okay. Generally that's a 10 year warranty on the, um, load bearing, uh, portions of the structure and two years on, uh, any systems in the house, electrical, plumbing, uh, HVAC, that type of thing. And all uh, manufacturers warranties must be, um, must be provided to the borrowers as well, such as on stove and oven range, uh, heat and air system. If there's, if there's, um, anything like that. So, okay. Uh, a lot of times we get questions about, can we give cash back to the borrower? So all of USDA loans are a no cash back to the borrower. They can only be reimbursed any funds that they've already put into the, um, into the transaction directly themselves if that was a, um, a, a loan purpose, an eligible loan purpose, such as if they've already paid the appraisal fee or inspection fees, they can get those types of funds back if you're rolling those into the loan. But typically there, there's no cash back to the borrower. Okay. Any funds remaining uh, in the contingency reserve account may be used for an eligible loan purpose or it can be applied as a principal reduction. So, that's good to know, right? Okay, certified plans and specifications. This is backing up a little bit, but uh, acceptable evidence of plans and specifications being certified that they meet the, uh, the construction codes include any one of the following, a, a certification from a qualified individual or organization, uh, and the rural development actually has a form uh, called the plan certification. It's form 1924-25 called the plan certification. And that's an, ex an acceptable form of certifying those plans and specs. You can get a certificate of occupancy from the local jurisdiction. Again, assuming they have adopted the, the building codes. Same thing for the building permit from the local jurisdiction. And so my notes here say that to look at page 12-21 in the USDA handbook again for the details of who can certify the plans and specifications can be a licensed architect. It can be a professional engineer. It can be a plan reviewer certified by national model code organization. It can be a local building official authorized to review and approve building plans and specs and it, or it can be a national code organization. So thought you might be uh, curious about who can certify those. Again, that's, that's on page 12-21 of our handbook. Thermal certifications. USDA is still very interested in having uh, affordable homes built, and part of that means that they the utilities won't be uh, higher than than what's average out there. So, the properties still do have to meet the Inter International Energy Conservation Code in effect at the time of construction, and uh, there's typically an these are typically included in the plans and specifications. So if they're not, then you have to make sure that they do meet uh, the IECC. Okay. Okay, let's talk for a minute about manufactured homes. I know all of you don't do manufactured homes, but for those that do, you can certainly um, combine the uh, single close construction or construction of permanent loans with manufactured homes. In all 50 states and, and territories, USDA will guarantee loans on manufactured homes that meet the standards on the following slides. And again, this is available on brand new units in all 50 states. We do have just a, a side note. We do have a 
a pilot going on right now for existing manufactured homes in 23 states, and those will be listed a little bit later, for existing manufactured homes built uh, in 2006 or later. Okay, so just keep that as a, uh, as a footnote. That has been extended until November the 4th of this year. So that, like I mentioned, the single family closed construction, single closed construction loan feature may certainly be used when financing new manufactured homes. So example of the draw timing. So if your dealer that you're working with requires a small deposit draw before the delivery of the unit, that's, we leave that up to, between you and, the, and that dealer uh, to manage those funds. You can certainly do draws for the well and septic installation, the driveway installation, any landscaping to be done, that final draw. So you're, at, you're able to access those funds in order to get all those subs um, uh, paid timely, okay? So let's talk about the units themselves. So to be eligible for USDA guarantee program, the manufactured homes must meet the following requirements. The site, uh, development work must conform to standards imposed by state and local governments. The unit must be new and never been installed or occupied at any other site or location other than the dealer's lot. The unit must have at least 400 square feet of, of living area and placed on a permanent foundation. The unit must be placed on a permanent in-ground foundation, as just mentioned. Guidelines are published in the Permanent Foundation Guide for Manufactured Homes. That's the HUD Guide 4930.3G, uh, which is found at that link. That is a clickable link. So if you if you have a copy of this presentation, you can click right there and it will take you to that, that HUD handbook that talks about that. It's basically a full in-ground concrete foundation with tie downs to those concrete footers. The unit must be must meet or exceed the federal manufactured home construction and safety standards for the geographic area where the unit will be placed. So just a footnote, if the unit is built in Florida, let's say, but it's going to be installed in Tennessee, it's got to meet Tennessee's um, construction standards and thermal standards, okay? So to be, all right, so rural development will not guarantee loans used to finance the following. The purchase of a unit without an eligible site, repairs that are not associated with a unit already financed by USDA. Again, this is all manufactured homes. Furniture or any other movable articles of personal property, wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, refrigerators, ovens, washing machines, and dryers, or similar items that are typically conveyed with a dwelling, those are allowed. Okay, wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, refrigerators, ovens, washing machines, and similar items. Wall-to-wall -wall carpeting is kind of an outdated term, but you know what I'm talking about. Additions or modifications are also ineligible except for porches, decks, or other structures that are built to engineered designs and are inspected and approved by a local building official. Okay, so all of that can be rolled into the loan, the cost of, of those additions as well. Okay, the agency will also not guarantee the purchase of a unit moved from another site other than the dealer's lot. This is on new construction. Units older than 12 months from the date of purchase agreement. Again, not talking about the pilot program. Uh, or a unit uh, with a tow hitch and running gear still remaining. So that tow hitch and running gear must have been removed when it's set on that permanent foundation for it to be eligible for USDA financing. So it's no longer uh, mobile, okay? All right, the borrower will work with a licensed manufactured home dealer throughout the completion of the project. It is the lender's responsibility to obtain all required certifications and documentation of the project and retain it in their permanent loan file. Documents are to include an itemized cost breakdown of the complete construction package, dealer certification that any cash payment or rebate will be deducted from the price of the unit and not paid directly to the applicant. That has to be um, submitted as well. And dealer certification that the proposed cost is the full price of the unit. So evidence that the foundation meets the HUD handbook. There it is, the HUD handbook 4960.3. Uh, I think now it has a G on that 4960.3G. 
the plot and site development plans uh, must, your files must contain those as well. All inspections required by and outlined in Handbook 13555, Chapter 12. And lastly, the certifications from the dealer and the builder contractor that all units were properly joined together and sealed and sustained no damage during transportation and setup. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, loan closing procedures are the same whether the guarantee is made for the purchase of a manufactured home or any other type of single family home. However, the lender should be aware of the following additional requirements. The dealer must provide the borrower with a copy of all manufacturer's warranties. The attachments 13A and 13B, those are of our, our USDA handbook. Those are uh, required or can be used to make the certifications we talked about a while ago for the contractors. The unit and site must be classified, zoned, and taxed as real estate. So these are not chattel loans. Both the unit and the site must be evidenced uh, by a recorded mortgage or deed of trust. Okay. And as mentioned earlier, just kind of to let you all know what 23 states are included in the pilot program for existing manufactured homes. Again, those are homes that are built in 2006 or later. You can see those states there. I won't name them off, but take a look and see if you uh, see your state there. They must be processed manually. GUS may be used only to upload documents. And there is the uh, federal register that talks about that in, in detail. Okay. And so the pilot says that USDA's pilot program has been renewed recently. This program allows for financing existing manufactured homes that were constructed on or after January 1st, 2006, and are in one of the pilot states. Other criteria to be considered that the unit must not have been previously installed in a different, on, on a different home site. The unit must have a floor area of no less than 400 square feet. The unit must have been constructed in conformance with the FMHC and the standards. The unit must not have had any structural alterations to it since construction in the factory. It must also meet other criteria set forth in 7 CFR in our handbook. So please note that all guaranteed loan applications submitted under this pilot project must be manually submitted and underwritten. Documents, however, can be uploaded through GUS. A job aid for this submission is available on our link library under the loan origination tab. I've also provided the link on this slide. So. Again, I'm kind of going through that kind of quickly since they, these don't necessarily uh, fall into uh, construction to perm, but I thought we would talk about them while we were right here talking about manufactured homes. Okay, so back to construction, construction to perm. Before we get into the specifics uh, on coding these loan features in GUS, our guaranteed underwriting system, we need to remind you that each lender employee who utilizes GUS is required to have their own individual login. So the big warning is do not share logins between employees. Repeated abuse of the system is in this way could jeopardize the lender's approval to use GUS and the guaranteed program. Okay. So when inputting initial information into GUS on the lender loan information screen in the transaction detail field, please make sure to pay close attention to the fields shown above and on the next screen, in order to correctly code these as construction of permanent or renovation, whichever one you're doing, we do have the reno loan feature where it's a single closing uh, as well. The box in the middle of the circle and without proper coding, the information is not accurately captured. So right there you can see is the construction uh, to permanent feature. OK, so if that is the item selected, additional fields appear. Choose from the single closing or two closing radio buttons and enter the values for the uh, improvement costs or the construction cost and the original cost of the lot. So we're breaking out the cost of the land and the, and the uh, construction. So after the issuance of the loan note guarantee, closing out the loan in the lender loan closing system. Okay, we'll talk about that now. So the lender loan closing system Lenders can add or update a loan closing from the Lender Loan Closing Administration link on the USDA link site. Most information will be pre-filled based on information you input uh, already in GUS. Additionally, the fee section will have the technology fee pre-populated as well as the upfront 
upfront guarantee fee, which is pre-populated based on the amount of the loan, okay? If a loan amount decreases, the upfront guarantee fee will, will be modified when the page is submitted by the lender. So there is a uh, lender user guide, LLC user guide is a great reference to walk lenders through the loan closing submission process. Okay. And the loan note guarantee may be retrieved from the lender loan closing system under the single family housing uh, lender administration list using the display documents from the action dropdown. And from here, the lender may view, print, and then retain the loan note guarantee in your permanent file. Okay. It should be noted here that this information is not available to the agency when reviewing the uh, loan closing documents. This slide, as well as the next several, are lender view only. Okay. So our single close construction loans do not, uh, I'm sorry, do require an important step for closing the post closers to complete once the construction is complete. Utilizing one of the cross reference methods, the user will select the loan by clicking on the borrower ID and the construction completion information page will populate. From there, three options are available. The user will select the drop down beside action. And I know it's a little bit blurry, but there's the action, there's the drop down. And choose the appropriate completion type. This next screen is zoomed in and I took that out actually. But from there, you can, uh, for those loans with remaining loan funds, um, such as reserve funds or contingency reserves, those um, and, and loans that do not need a modification, you will simply select the principal reduction only for the completion type. With this option, you must complete the following fields, construction completion date, uh, principal reduction date, modified unpaid principal balance, and principal reduction amount. Finally, the lender will upload the supporting documentation for evidence of the principal reduction and the lender certification. For those loans with remaining loan funds after construction with a loan modification, you'll want to select the principal reduction with modification option. Okay. With this option, you must complete the following fields, construction completion date, principal reduction date, modified unpaid principal reduction or balance, sorry, principal reduction amount, loan modification date, lower interest rate when applicable. And finally, the lender will upload the supporting documentation for evidence of the principal reduction, loan modification and the lender certifications. Finally, for those loans that the construction is complete and will require no principal reduction or loan modifications, you will select construction complete, no principal reduction or loan modification. Imagine that. <laughs> that will be your choice for this one. So with that option, you only need to enter the construction completion date and then upload the lender certification. Okay, so that pretty much concludes our um, training on the single closed construction. Let's take a look at resources available to you as lenders and the general public and realtors and builders. So USDA Rural Development, there's our website. If you go there and you hover over programs and services and you come all the way down to single family housing programs, you can see how many programs we have or divisions we have. So if you click there, You'll, you'll come up uh, to where you can choose either our direct loans or our guaranteed loans. We've been talking all day about our guaranteed loans, y'all. We USDA administers two separate uh, loan programs for uh, home purchases and home financing. Direct loans are, are for low and for up to low income uh, households. Those have subsidy available on the payments and those are made and administered from the state offices. Our guaranteed loans are administered from the national office, and that's the ones we've been talking about all day. So, uh, and, and they, they do have some different uh, guidelines and different requirements. One of them obviously is that the guaranteed loans can go up to moderate income, whereas the direct is limited to um, low income. So moderate income can go up to 115% of median income for a given area, okay? So uh, if you want to take a look at our handbook and, and all of these uh, construction requirements we've been talking about today, those are all listed in chapter 12 under property and appraisal requirements. And there's the, a direct link to the handbook right there. 
We also have training and resource training and resource library. Uh, so we have short on-demand trainings under loan origination and lender trainings. Uh, so if you have a particular area that you want to brush up on, say um, say income and assets or repayment ability or something of the sort, um, you can go to this these uh, on-demand trainings and take just those short 10 to 15 minute trainings on each topic, or you can go through them all, whatever you uh, prefer to do. I thought we would uh, highlight that as well. And there is one on construction, combination construction of permanent loans as well, okay? All right, so the, here is our lender page that gives our turn times. You can come to this lender page, the link right here, and it'll show the turn times, what, what, and don't pay attention to the particular date here, this is old, but it'll show you the day that we're working on files that we received on a particular day, okay? And while you're there, if you're not already signed up to receive um, USDA updates in your inbox by email each day, um, you can sign up right there to receive those, to stay up and current on USDA changes, okay? Here's a handy little, little uh, cheat sheet um, for contact information. You have all of these um, email addresses and phone numbers for all the different types of um, topics that you might want to uh, contact us for. Once a, a file has been submitted for review, uh, the, these are file specific questions to once you've already submitted them for review. So you can contact the um, review teams up here. And I won't go into each one of those, but this wouldn't be a bad thing to have printed out and, and uh, kept at your desk right there to, to know uh, how to contact us. And fairly new still as our toll free number, you can call us up and talk with us directly. One of our, you can see the turn times there. You can get that verbally by calling, file specific questions uh, right there. Lender recertifications and approvals, hit option three. Policy and scenario questions. That's probably one of our most used options is number four. Any Gus technical questions, um, hit option five and you can talk to a live person. Okay, so that pretty much uh, takes us through to the end. So, uh, I'm not sure if we were going to wrap it up here or have any any additional comments from any of the team today. Okay. So do we or do we have any uh, lingering questions that we're answering in the chat anymore, team? Let me go to the chat and see if I can make that determination Q and A. Okay, let's see. I didn't want to cut it short if we had a lot of uh, Q&A still going on, so. Ed, I think we have all of the, I think we've been able to answer them as they have been coming through. Okay, excellent then. All right, so with that, uh, thank you everybody for joining us today and hopefully this has uh, answered a lot of your questions on the single close construction or construction of permanent loans. And we are, we're always here to for you if you want to reach out and contact us about uh, further information or get started on your company being uh, uh, involved in the single close construction. We can do one-on-one uh, -on -one trainings with you. Um, so hit us up and uh, hopefully this will help you all in your business. And with that, I guess we'll sign off and hope everybody has a good afternoon and talk to you later. Goodbye.